Today we will talk about important topic in neurology which is headache with meningeal signs. First of all before coming to headache with meningeal signs we need to know what's the headache and what is the meningeal signs. Headache have a general, defini uh, a general definition as, the po as people define it and definition special to the medical stuff. Uh, what people define headache, they define it as a general term referred to persistent or lasting pain in the head region. A medical definition of the headache it is the pain sensation from the area of above the eye pro to the area below the occiput. Any pain in the side of the body is called headache. What are the causes of headache? The headache is the pain in the head, simply. So anything abnormal in the head may cause headache. There are uh, many causes. If there is abnormality in the skin, we will come from out uh, to inside. If there is abnormality in the skin, dermatitis, uh, any dermatological problem, it will cause headache, pain sensation. If there is abnormality in the bone or in the, in the subcutaneous tissue or uh, in the bone, trauma, like a trauma, this will cause a headache. If there is abnormality in the meninges, inflammation, or as, as we will talk about in details about meningitis, uh, will cause a pain in the head, headache. If there is abnormality in the brain, brain pain or brain abscess, encephalitis, or any abnormality, this will lead to headache. This is the primary headache. Primary headache is that type of headache of, of pain which is caused because of uh, abnormality or disorders, trauma in the head. Referred headache is the uh, second type which is caused by uh, the, the cause is not in the head itself, it is in other sites. It might be in the mouth leading to headache. Uh, sinusitis leading to headache, otitis media, disorders in vision, uh, inflammation in the eye, or any types of um, abnormality may lead to headache. This is the first classification. There are many rules and many uh, different classifications for headache. But uh, the first one is primary and secondary according to the cause, and the second one is according to the site of pain. The site of hip pain, if it was in the periorbital area, this is a cluster headache. If it was uh, surrounding the head like tough, something tough uh, is surrounding our uh, head, it's called tension headache. And this is the most common type of headache, comes uh, with stress and many many causes uh, if this uh, headache was in only in one half of the head and sometime in the head and face this is called migraine we will not talk about them in details because our topic is not headache it is headache with meningeal signs meningeal signs there are three signs which is next stiffness brunus brusniski sign and kinger sign king uh, kernix sign sorry these three signs are caused by uh, because of uh, meningeal irritation. Meningeal irritation is simply meningeal stretch, overstretch of meninges that surround the brain. Overstretch of this meninges lead to pain sensation. So all the signs come because uh, or appear because our body want uh, this uh, meninges to relax. So the body refuse or the patient refuse to uh, flex his uh, neck forward because he don't want to stretch his meninges as it is uh, already in this uh, case is stretched and this will lead to pain sensation. So he refused to do this thing as well as the other um, signs. All, of, all the idea is overstretched and we want to make it uh, relax as much as possible to get rid of pain for differential diagnosis a case come to the clinic complaining of headache severe headache that he cannot deal with it exhausted to uh, to this patient he cannot work cannot sleep cannot even deal with the others because of his headache and positive meningeal signs 
for differential diagnosis. It might be meningitis, might be meningism, encephalitis, meningoencephalitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage, cerebritis, and brain abscess. How can we differentiate between all of these? What's the method that um, I will use or follow to exclude each one of them? This is our topic. This is a picture shows meninges and brain. As you see, the meninges are the membranes that covering the brain directly to protect it. Meningitis. Meningitis simply can be defined as inflammation in the layers surrounding the brain, dura, pia, and arachnoid matters or membranes. Uh, arachnoid membranes. It's not a matter. Sorry. Dura, pia, and arachnoid membranes covering the brain directly. Inflammation in these membranes is called meningitis. This is uh, this picture shows how normal meninges looks and how inflamed meninges looks. You can see the difference between them. Uh, meningitis is different types of meningitis are classified according to the pathogen or the causative agent. If it was bacteria, this will be bacterial meningitis, virus, uh, viral meningitis, mycobacterium tuberculosis, this is called tuberculous meningitis. There are other types, but uh, these are the most common or the most important types and the most common of this type of meningitis is bacterial meningitis. It is uh, more common in children rather than adults and it's the most common type, bacterial meningitis. How can we diagnose meningitis? The patient come to my clinic complaining of severe headache and uh, during examination I find the positive meningeal signs. This is the first step of diagnosis. After that, I, I'm going to make sure that my diagnosis is, uh, is right. It's not... Uh, first of all, the, uh, speaking about the symptoms that the patient comes with, fever, headache, and neck stiffness. This is a triad of meningitis. Fever is a general symptom, so I cannot see this patient have meningitis because he has a fever. As uh, any infection in the body, in any, in any part of the body, will cause fever. But fever with headache and neck stiffness makes uh, as make a sense and make it uh, possible to be meningitis there are uh, different uh, symptoms in different parts of the body ear muscles eyes stomach skin the patient may come with them but it is very rare as uh, as i have said the pain in this case is very severe and the patient cannot deal with the pain cannot live with that pain so that, uh, of course, he is going to visit the doctor or visit the clinic before the signs and symptoms appear in early stage of the disease simply. What we are going to do this to this patient uh, is investigations to make sure about our diagnosis. This investigation can be laboratory investigations by taking a cerebrospinal fluid uh, sample uh, using a lamp puncture or imaging. In case of meningitis or uh, encephalitis or any one of the differential diagnoses that we have mentioned before, that I have mentioned before, uh, we will start with imaging, simply with the CT. Uh, it's not written here, but uh, it's very important to use. We will use CT in the first. Why we are going to use CT even it is more expensive than laboratory investigations. So. Um, it is um, it, it is not fair to start with mo the more expensive but we will start with it as we must exclude intracranial pressure high intracranial pressure in this case patient complaining of uh, headache and positive meningeal signs so it is suspected to uh, he is suspected to have very high intracranial pressure. Doing lumbar puncture for a patient who have a high uh, intracranial pressure will expose him to brain herniation. So I'm not going to make sure about my diagnosis in a shape way by lumbar puncture 
uh, when there is a possibility to cause brain herniation to my to my patient so that we must start with CT just to rule out this uh, in, in very high intracranial pressure. If the CT was normal or it wasn't that high, that uh, makes us uh, that that makes us um, to forget the idea of doing lumbar puncture. After that, if I do I do a CT scan for my patient normal intracranial pressure the next step is doing lumbar puncture and taking out a cerebrospinal fluid sample what we are going to search about in this uh, cerebrospinal uh, fluid we are going uh, to count the white blood cells protein glucose glucose level the bacterial meningitis mostly associated with low glucose as the it use it in it is feeding bacteria use glucose in feeding and uh, high protein and of course high white blood cell count because we are dealing with infection so that it's normal to be present then for uh, treatment now I know there the patient has meningitis how to treat this patient is uh, simply what's the cause of this meningitis to treat uh, the case you must treat the underlying cause the underlying cause means what's the pathogen. So we will start searching about the pathogen causing this meningitis. Uh, using PCR and serology test, uh, sometime we use, uh, we need to do a culture, but most of the time we just uh, use uh, the antibiotics, the antibiotics before uh, f uh, the result of this test as it takes long time to appear. This is uh, a CT for a patient with meningitis. You can see the meninges. It looks inflamed and take uh, a space larger than normal. For the treatment, the treatment of meningitis is simply according to the case, according to the case, according to the stage of the disease. The treatment is different from late stage of disease and uh, early stage of disease. Early stage of disease mostly antibiotics, antibiotics, ampicillin, sevalosporins, aminoglycosides are used in these cases and mostly it is a combination of all of them uh, are used in case of meningitis and mainly bacterial meningitis but in a, in a late stage or uh, uh, severe cases of meningitis we don't um, we give this antibiotics with the corticosteroids. Why to use a corticosteroid while I have infection? Corticosteroids means uh, low immunity and I need my, uh, my immune system to fight this bacteria who attacks my meninges. But immune system will attack the bacteria, destroy it, as well as destroying the meninges. So uh, the idea is keeping meninges healthy more than uh, fighting the bacteria. The bacteria uh, will not kill me as or will not affect my life as the uh, as meningeal distraction will, will do. So that corticosteroids will use in a very late uh, in a late cases or late stage of disease. The second uh, differentiate the second differential diagnosis is meninges. Meninges is simply defined as the meningeal irritation or uh, it is also called meningismus or pseudomeningitis. From it, we can know the idea or the definition from the name, pseudomeningitis. That means we have meningitis while meningitis is absent. How this thing can happen is by the definition, pseudomeningitis is a set of symptoms similar to those of meningitis, but not caused by meningitis. That means I will have headache, Meningeal signs while my mini, while the meninges are uh, healthy and normal without any inflammation. Mening, uh, meningism is caused by non-meningitic irritation of meninges, usually associated with acute febrile illness, especially in children and adolescents. The third differential diagnosis is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage means uh, uh, bleeding in the subarachnoid space. Sub means uh, pilu and arachnoid is uh, one of the spaces or, or one of the membranes 
uh, meaning gill membranes. As a definition, it is a bleeding into the subarachnoid space, the area between arachnoid membrane and the pia mater. Uh, surrounding the brain, this may occur spontaneously, usually from a rupture of cerebral aneurysm. As we say, uh, rupture, uh, any meningeal irritation will lead to meningeal signs and uh, headache. This uh, bleeding occur in between the layers of the, meningi the meninges leading to it is irritation because of overstretch will lead to the signs and symptoms that we have mentioned. The most common cause uh, is rupture cerebral aneurysm. This is uh, only in this present only in the book while the most common cause in practical life is uh, due to trauma. What are the causes of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Causes of subarachnoid hemorrhage can be, uh, as we said, because of uh, trauma. It can be congenital aneurysm, perianeurysm. Uh, the congenital aneurysm start in a small size. Uh, when we come bigger, it come bigger and uh, compression leading to its rupture, leading to subarachnoid hemorrhage. The uh, other uh, cause is uh, angiomatous malformation. Angiomatous malformation means abnormality in the blood vessels itself. The blood vessels present in this area are abnormal. There is malformation in this blood vessels leading to its rupture and hemorrhage. Uh, for uh, patients who, 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 uh, who have congenital aneurysm or perianeurysm mostly come with uh, coarctation of aorta, polycystic kidney and Turner syndrome. Uh, this how to differentiate uh, this cause from other causes. Also, uh, it might be due to hemorrhagic blood disease, something general. It is not specific to the brain. It's not trauma in the brain or aneurysm in the brain or malformation in the blood vessels of the brain. It might be a cause, a systemic cause. Hemorrhagic blood vessel, hemorrhagic blood disease due to uh, uh, Abnormality in the coagulation system also might be due to overdose of anticoagulant. The patients who are in anticoagulant regular take overdose leading to this case. Hypertension can cause it in a very late stage. Hemorrhage from a brain tumor. Brain tumor. Uh, hemorrhage from brain tumor can cause the. Uh, can cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. The subarachnoid hemorrhage leading, what's the pathophysiology of this, uh, of this subarachnoid hemorrhage? Is by increased intracranial pressure. You can imagine the view, more blood what it leads to increase the pressure in this uh, closed site, which is the brain, increase intracranial pressure leading to headache, vomiting, blur, uh, blurring of vision or blurred vision also uh, there is a mean positive meningeal signs because there will be overstretch to the meninges as we have mentioned before the headache this type of headache mostly increased uh, if patient cough if he sneeze and uh, decrease uh, after uh, vomiting projectile vomiting we are speaking about uh, neuro this picture show uh, aneurysm this aneurysm might rupture, causing bleeding. Bleeding will cause meningeal irritation, and the patient will come with headache and meningeal signs. Uh, for diagnosis of this case, history is taking and examination. History, uh, we can find history of trauma that will make us suspect. From history, we can uh, find polycystic kidney. Turner aneurysm, uh, Turner syndrome, coarctation of aorta during uh, during uh, examination and uh, history. This will uh, make us suspect congenital aneurysm. When suspecting me congenital aneurysm, the most common cause of this uh, of this meningeal irritation and headache will be subarachnoid hemorrhage. After that, we will do a CT scan, uh, as we have uh, said, to rule out high intracranial pressure to make sure. Uh, intracranial pressure is not that high. If it was not that high, we will take a sample of cerebrospinal fluid for laboratory examination uh, via lumbar puncture. 
and coagulation profile must be done we are uh, dealing with a case of uh, bleeding and bleeding means coagulation profile so this test must be done the idea here is we know uh, when doing gland puncture sometime even if the patient didn't ha don't have a subarachnoid hemorrhage the sample comes the cerebrospinal fluid comes mixed with blood due to uh, wrong technique forceful uh, insertion of the needle so how can as a doctor how can i differentiate how can i differentiate between uh, cerebrospinal fluid c mixed with blood due to uh, wrong technique in taking the sample or due to subarachnoid hemorrhage it is important for me to uh, to arrive to my differential diagnosis how can i differentiate is by putting the sample f uh, in a test tube and let it for hours without anything without uh, mixing it without doing anything for it just let it for hours if it was due to a trauma or wrong technique in doing lamp puncture the this blood will clot when i come after uh, four or five hours i will find a clot inside the cerebrospinal fluid so this is not subarachnoid hemorrhage it is just wrong technique or forceful insertion of this needle leading to injury of uh, blood vessels and uh, blood coming out of this uh, of this vessels but if it was uh, as uh, as it comes out mixed with blood without any clot without any clot formation that means this is subarachnoid hemorrhage why the clot present in case of trauma and not present in subarachnoid hemorrhage even it is blood what what's the present what present in the subarachnoid space is blood and what present inside this blood vessels that i mistook uh, by a wrong way causing it is injury during lamp puncture is blood as uh, as that of subarachnoid hemorrhage is blood how can i differentiate between these types or why this um, this blood due to injury uh, clot have a clot formation and the second didn't have a clot formation it's because of um, the the blood that present in the subarachnoid hemorrhage comes out of this blood vessels and enter in a very narrow space subarachnoid space the subarachnoid space is very narrow and the blood comes out of the blood vessels into this uh, space this space is not lined with smooth endothelium to keep the red blood cell healthy so that they distract the blood coming out of the vessels enter into the subarachnoid space and distract in the subarachnoid space fibrin which is present inside the blood which makes it clot which makes uh, responsible for its clotting comes out and stuck in the membrane in the subarachnoid uh, in the subarachnoid uh, or in the arachnoid membrane arachnoid membrane and pia matter stuck so that the blood comes uh, comes down with cerebrospinal fluid free of fibrin so no clot formation will be present and that is uh, how i will differentiate between blood due to uh, injury or due to the bleeding itself another types of investigation by imaging uh, i will find a compressed ventricle a compressed uh, ventricle or uh, a hemorrhage will be obvious for me also another uh, another uh, finding of meningi meningitis itself might be present in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage what are the finding of uh, meningitis they are to, there are two important findings which is compressed ventricles and uh, shifted midline shifted midline in the CT what's the treatment of subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, another important thing that I forget to mention it in the in investigation uh, cerebral angiography may be used and magnetic resonance and the angiography also may be used in uh, diagnosis
in the diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage. In treatment, we have two lines of treatment. There are surgical line and uh, medical line. Of course, we will start with medical line. And of course, sometimes we don't use surgical line or we ignore it even in severe cases because uh, we cannot open the brain just to take blood uh, out of it or just to drain the blood. The medical treatment, starting with symptomatic treatment, as I have said, the patient come with very severe headache that he cannot deal with it and cannot live with it. So analgesics must be given. Uh, he will complain uh, because of his intracranial pressure, uh, high intracranial pressure. Of course, he will be complaining of vomiting. So antiemetics must be given. For intracranial pressure, uh, we will high intracranial pressure. We will put the patient in semi-sitting position and giving him many tools, just trying to um, decrease his intracranial pressure. In severe uh, cases, hyperventilation and uh, hyperventilation to avoid uh, thiopental coma. Anti-epileptic drugs must be given, prophylactic anti-epileptic drugs, abnormality uh, in the brain due to subarachnoid hemorrhage, increased intracranial pressure, all these uh, makes the patient suspected to have uh, seizures or epilep epileptic attacks. So prophylactic anti-epileptic drugs must be given. In the first three days, we will give antifibrinolytic. Why to give anti antifibrinolytic? is to prevent re-bleeding. The clot formation will not affect the patient or will not affect the state of the patient as re-bleeding will do. So we must prevent re-bleeding. The, uh, the surgical treatment is uh, by ligation of feeding vessels most of the time. What will happen if it wasn't treated? What will happen to this patient if we didn't give him the treatment? The case will complicate. Complication will be present. What are the complications of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage? Is epilepsy, as we have said, intracranial pressure seizures and might be progress to epilepsy. Hydrocephalus, herniation, brain herniation, uh, re-bleeding. Re-bleeding is uh, acute complication may present so that to prevent bleeding we give uh, in the first three days after the diagnosis of subarachnoid hemorrhage we give antifibrinolytic also uh, as a physiological response due to bleeding the blood vessels of the brain will have vasoconstriction to reduce this bleeding and vasoconstriction will affect other areas uh, may infract infraction may, may be present also encephalitis encephalitis is the inflammation of the brain itself it's not inflammation of the as we inflammation of the layers of the brain is meningitis encephalitis is the inflammation of the brain parenchyma Different causes of encephalitis might be viral, which is the most common cause. The most common cause of encephalitis is viral uh, infection. So it can be defined as a medical condition where there is inflammation of the brain. The commonest cause of encephalitis is viral infection. Different viruses may cause uh, herpes simplex type 1 and type 2, rabies virus, enterovirus, can, uh, cytomegalovirus also may cause. Uh, encephalitis, viral encephalitis, can be due to autoimmune, autoimmune disease, or autoimmune encephalitis. What do we mean by autoimmune encephalitis? Is our immune system start to deal with our brain as a pathogen? So he start to distract it, and um, this will lead to autoimmune to encephalitis, autoimmune encephalitis. Straight Lewis encephalitis is a rare type of encephalitis caused by a special type of virus. We are not, we will not uh, speak about it in details because it is very rare. There are diagnostic key, uh, criteria to diagnose encephalitis. Major criteria and minor criteria are required. Major criteria is subacute on, onset of impairment. Simply 
change in consciousness, memory change, mental state change, uh, psychiatric change, uh, the patient start to be psychosis, something abnormal have present to him. And minor criteria, at least I need two minor criteria to diagnose uh, possible encephalitis. Of course, I will, it, I will be suspected uh, encephalitis as one of the differential diagnosis of headache, severe headache with meningeal signs. Uh, so that two of these may be uh, may help uh, help me in making uh, sure about the diagnosis. Uh, fever being higher than 38 centigrade, seizures, attacks of seizures, uh, cerebrospinal fluid uh, being uh, high white blood cells. Of course, uh, if it was. Uh, bacterial uh, which is very rare in this case low glucose high protein evidence of brain parenchymal inf uh, inflammation by neuroimaging acute or subacute acute and subacute we know the difference between them neuroimaging used in this case is CT MRI and EEG how can we treat encephalitis according to the underlying cause mostly using a cyclovir as the most common of, uh, cause of encephalitis is viral, so mostly we use a cyclovir, which is antiviral, uh, in treating encephalitis. Meningitis, meningitis vas encephalitis. This is a comparison between meningitis and encephalitis. Meningitis is the inflammation of the protective layers of the uh, or tissue of tissue membranes that covers the brain. Uh, encephalitis is the brain itself or inflammation of the brain itself. Uh, mostly meningitis is caused by bacterial, but it can be caused by bacterial, uh, virus, or fungi. Encephalitis is caused by virus, viral, uh, viral agents, mostly. Can exist for meningitis. It can exist only as a single form. Uh, while encephalitis can be present as a primary type or secondary type. Primary type is when the uh, pathogen that enters directly to the brain and secondary when it is uh, it, it doesn't enter from environment to the brain. No, it is present in another organ in the body and uh, secondary uh, or secondly it comes to the brain causing encephalitis. So a single form in meningitis and different forms, which is primary and secondary types in encephalitis. Symptoms of meningitis include sudden fever, uh, severe headache, nausea, vomiting, double vision, drowsiness, photophobia, and neck stiffness. And symptoms of uh, in, while well, symptoms in, of encephalitis is not that high of fever. It might be moderate fever. Uh, seizures must be present as we have said behavioral change consciousness change in memory uh, psychiatric change uh, this coordination and uh, related neurological science for diagnosis of meningitis uh, blood examination routine blood examination and culture may be enough uh, because uh, bacterial infection mostly appear in this uh, in this culture or uh, during blood examination but for encephalitis we need uh, neuroimaging techniques CT, MRI and EEG as we have mentioned before for meningitis it is simply treated with uh, ampicillin combined with aminoglycosides and sevalsporines and encephalitis is treated with intravenous acyclovir for 10 days uh, acyclovir because it is viral infection mostly and honestly um, the doctors deal with it as viral infection. They don't just think in autoimmune or in rare cases because mostly it is a viral infection. So deal with they deal with it as a viral infection and treat it with a cyclovir. Meningoencephalitis is when both of them present meningitis and encephalitis it can because it is uh, due to meningitis and encephalitis meningitis is mostly due to bacteria so bacterial cause may lead to meningoencephalitis uh, encephalitis uh, is mostly due to virus so viral infection may lead to encephalitis 
viral infection and bacterial infection. Bacterial infection like uh, Neisseria meningitis, mucoplasmic, uh, mucoplasma pneumonia. The viruses like Epstein Barr virus, enteroviruses, measles, varicella zoster, herpes, enterovirus, and uh, protozoal infection may be present. Uh, primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. This is a common cause. Also, toxo uh, toxoplasma may cause uh, meningoencephalitis and other causes. For diagnosis, history and examination. History of severe headache. Examination, m positive meningeal signs. CT, as we have mentioned before, to rule out in high or very high intracranial pressure. Cerebrospinal fluid to uh, improve uh, there is abnormality in the cerebrospinal fluid, torbid mostly, and uh, as we have said, high uh, white blood cell count, uh, high protein and low glucose in case of bacterial, EEG and MRI, neuroimaging is uh, important and needed to uh, improve the diagnosis. For treatment also, an important investigation in case of uh, meningoencephalitis, meningo brain abscess, br brain biopsy, sorry, brain biopsy may be used or uh, may be needed, but it is uh, rarely, rarely to be done because I will expose the patient to complication and uh, dangerous process just to make sure about a diagnosis. Uh, for treatment, the treatment is according to the case, according to the type of uh, pathogen that causes meningoencephalitis, being bacterial, being viruses, being viral, and sometimes it is combination of them. Cerebritis, uh, cerebritis also inflammation of the parenchyma of the brain. Uh, we deal with it as we have deal with the previous for investigation and for uh, treatment it is uh, as we have mentioned before cerebritis or cerebral abscess and uh, cerebritis or brain abscess may come uh, with a patient with cerebritis and patient with the uh, brain abscess may come with severe headache and positive meningeal signs. How can I differentiate this patient have cerebritis or cerebral abscess? The only way to differentiate, the only way to differentiate between uh, cerebritis and cerebral abscess is using uh, neuroimaging. Neuroimaging will show if it is uh, cerebritis, I will find a area, abnormal area, which is uh, white than the other parts of the of the brain but it is not uh, demarcating it is not uh, capsulated it's not surrounded by something cerebral abscess is capsulated bus formation capsulated this is how to differentiate between them that cerebral abscess is encapsulated and uh, there is a capsule in case of cerebral abscess and there is no capsule in case of cerebritis this is how to differentiate. You can see this picture is uh, CT for uh, patient with cerebral abscess. And we can uh, see the capsule. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope it was uh, useful for you. And uh, if you have any questions, you can just write it down in a comment. Thanks a lot.